Okay, so this is the bottom of the ocean in the Minas Basin in the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia, Canada. It is August 2011. And this is the largest littoral zone, which means beach or intertidal zone, um, on Earth. At least I think it is. And the tide here is extreme. These are the five islands, I suppose. Maybe I should mention that. We're on Long Island right now. The tides here are extreme, about 50 feet or more from high tide to low tide. And the tide goes in and out very, very quickly. Anyways, there's a lot of interesting things in terms of sedimentation in littoral zones. And we're just going to look at this one, which is a stream. Now, the stream is actually salt water. Um, it's leaking out of the surrounding sediments, but I want to show you a couple of things. One of them is the types of load in a stream. Now, I mentioned it was salt water. So, in salt water, I suppose salt is dissolved. And so that's called the dissolved load. Anything that will dissolve in salt water, or in, in any water, is called dissolved load. Now, bed load, or traction load, um, is what's moving. I, don't, I hope you can see that. In the bed of the stream, hoping you can see things moving. In the bed of the stream are sediments that are moving along the bed. They're not up in the uh, water. They're actually in the bed of the stream. And the way they move is by hopping and skipping along the bottom. That's called saltation. Other things just roll along the bottom and that's the traction load, I suppose. So that's the bed load. So we have dissolved load and bed load. Now, hopefully I'll be able to find a bit of murky water um, that'll have some sediment in it, and that would be called the suspended load. That would be the silt and the clay. Bed load or traction is gravels and sands, and dissolved load is dissolved salts, essentially. And suspended load is clay and silt. So I'll try and find that for you. Okay, so there's a few interesting features here. Um, one of which is a divided stream. Hopefully you can see that there are uh, medial bars, which are um, like a gravel bar in the middle of a stream, where the stream divides around it. And there's a couple right there. You can also see a cut bank right over there, where on an outside meander, you get a lot of erosion on the outside of that meander, and on the inside you get deposition. Well, there's some humidity, so, and I see it's fogging up my lenses on this camera, so hopefully you'll be able to see this. Anyways, so this is a stream course. This is a meandering stream. Um, it's showing a couple of things, a couple of features. Meandering means it wanders around on its floodplain. And two of the features that it's showing are a cut bank. Uh, where can I show you a cut bank? So if you look on the left side of this meander, you can see that erosion has taken place and the bank is sort of falling in or being cut in. It's called a cut bank. And on the inside of the meander, there's more sediment buildup. That's called a point bar. The reason why is that on the outside of the meander, uh, the current is faster and on the inside the current is slower. In a faster environment you can carry larger sediments and you can definitely carry all the finer sediments which leaves the larger ones, the largest ones anyways, behind. That's why the coarse grain sediments are on the left and the finer grain sediments are on the right. It's a slower environment on the right. Cut banks, point bars, and meanders. I suppose more correctly you would call these meander scars since the stream is no longer there. This is quite a well-developed cut bank. It's actually being undercut and then you would have slumping. I can show you slumping. Right there. That's slumping of the undercut cut bank. 
where new material enters the stream and is carried away.